Hi class, we're still in that unit of relations and functions, and so today this is going to be section 1.3 and we're going to talk about distance on the plane. Today's objectives, we're going to calculate the distance between two points and we're actually going to kind of um, look at it in a few different ways and then also we're going to find the midpoint of a line segment. Now just remember, we in the previous lesson we talked about this Cartesian plane, we talked about the ideas of symmetry, and we talked about you know plotting points and how that interacts with this Cartesian plane. Now another important concept in geometry is this notion of length. And so if we're going to continue to unite this idea of algebra and geometry together with this Cartesian plane, we need to understand the concept of distance. And if you look at other applied sciences, this idea of distance is really important. So suppose we have two points. Now the idea of these two points here, I'm just going to say point P and point Q. This whole zero, this is x sub zero, y sub zero, or x naught, y naught, and this is x sub one, y sub one. It's just point identifiers. It's for me to say with P, I know that this is like point zero, if that's the way you want to think about it. And so this subscript zero is just saying from point zero, I have uh, the x value from point zero and the y value from point zero. And if this is point one, this is the x value from point one and this is the y value from point one. So I have two points, p and q, and they're in that plane. Now by the distance d between those two points, we're talking about the length of the line segment that's being created here. And so I have this visual representation here. We're looking at the length of this line segment. Now to create this formula, we're going to kind of have to manipulate this visual of length to be able to do that. And so we're going to spend a little bit of time trying to create this distance formula. So let's take a look at here. What I did is I took this line and I decided, hey, you know what? What if I just turn this into a right triangle? And so I, I drew that here. Here's my right triangle that I have created. Now this is still that point zero and this is still that point one. But now, because this is the x coordinate, this is going to be x1, and this is the y coordinate here, this is going to be y sub 0. And so I know that this is going to be y sub 0. So now that we're looking at this in terms of a right triangle, back in geometry we learned a formula that kind of helps us find different sides of a right triangle, and that is the Pythagorean theorem. And so we're actually going to be using this Pythagorean theorem to be able to derive the distance formula. So if you remember, the Pythagorean theorem was a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And so if I wanted to label this, I can say, you know, this is my a, this is my b, and this is my c. Well, this one's easy. I know my c is d, okay, so that's easy to replace. But how do I find my a? Now if we notice, my a is the change in my x values, right? I'm moving from this va x value and it shifts over to this x value. Now, whenever we're trying to find the change and those values, what you do is you subtract them. So I'm going to say this x value, subtract from this x value, and so that's going to be x1 minus x0. This one's going to be the change in my y's, so I'm going to say y1 minus y0. And so now that I have what my a is, now that I have what my b is, I know that c is the same as d, I can take that and I can plug it in. And so I have my a squared plus b squared equals d squared. And so now I have to get d by itself. So I can square root both sides, and so I'm going to get d equals the square root of 1 minus uh, x1 minus x0 uh, squared, or x0 squared, uh, plus y1 minus y sub 0 squared. And so we can actually qualify that, the equation. If I'm saying uh, the distance d between the points p and q, it's going to be this equation here. Now, it doesn't have to be labeled P and Q. The point that it's making is that if I have any two points, I would label this X sub 0, Y sub 0, X sub 1, Y sub 1, and I can plug that information straight into the distance formula. Now, I know in the past, sometimes they've said this is X1, Y1, X2, Y2. It's just all the same. It's how I'm trying to qualify it. 
So let's look at an example here. It says find and simplify the distance between P and Q. So it kind of helps us if we visualize it. So if I were to graph this, here's my point P, here's my point Q, and from that definition, I can say this is X naught, this is Y naught, this is X1, and this is Y1. And so it's asking me to find what this distance D is here. And so I can, here's my formula, and I can just plug the stuff into the formula. And so if I do that, my X1 is one, my X naught is negative two, my, X, or my Y1 is negative three, my y naught is 3, and so I can plug them right in. And so continue to simplify, continue to simplify, I get the square root of 45. Now because this is a square root, I can say that that's the same thing as square root of 9 times the square root of 5, which is just going to be 3 root 5. Now you could just plug that into a calculator and get the decimal approximation. You can go ahead and do that. That's okay. Just understand that you know this is a way for us to do it. So the first thing that I did is it helps us to visualize what the problem is asking, which is what I did, so I, I drew a picture of it. Don't necessarily have to, but it just helps, and you'll see in how the next problem that we go over how it is gonna help. Step two, I wanna plug the information into the distance formula. So I take my x1, my x sub zero, my y1, and my y zero, I plugged them into the formula. Do, 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 I solved for the missing variable. In this case, it happened to be d. And so because I solved for D, I, sim I got the square root of 45, and then I continue to simplify that radical into 3 root 5. Let's look at another example here. It says find all of the points with the x coordinates 1, which are 4 units from the point 3, 2. Interesting. Okay, so let's kind of like visualize what this is asking. It says I have the point 3, 2, and it's asking me to find all the points with the x coordinate one. So that could, there's my x coordinate one. Here's a m series of points that I have here. But what it's asking is find the ones that have a distance of four. So if I start from this point and end up on that line, it asks me what values can I find that are gonna give me the distance of four. Now, if you're observing, we could probably also draw one that goes up there. Probably maybe not one that goes in the middle like that. So maybe we're gonna get two, but let's kind of like start plugging this in. So I know that my first point is three, two. I know that my X coordinate has to be one, but I have no idea what my Y value is. No idea, it's not available for me. It's, I have to find that, right? I don't know how high or how low it is on this line here. So I can just say this is my X naught, Y naught, X one, Y one. And so I want to plug everything into the formula. My distance, it gave it to us. It says, which are four units, so my distance is four. And then one minus three squared plus y minus two squared. So I just plugged everything straight into the formula. And so now I want to solve for the missing variable. I want to solve for this y that I have here, this y1. Okay, so I want to solve for that. So the first thing I can do is I have to get rid of this square root, and so I can do that by squaring both sides. Then I kind of simplified a little bit here. One minus three is negative two. Negative two squared is four. Four squared is 16. That square root and the square, they canceled out. Okay, so I didn't have to worry about that, so those canceled out. And so I still have this y minus two squared. Now this is a binomial, so maybe isolate that by subtracting four on both sides. And so now I'm gonna get 12 equals y minus two squared. Now I can square root both sides. And so when you take the square root, we can't forget, we have to have a plus or minus. So I'm gonna get the plus or minus, the square root of 12 equals my y minus two. Add two to both sides. And so when I add two to both sides, I get y equals two plus or minus two root three. Now I know that sometimes it's like, wow, we did all this work, we must be done. Well, did I answer the question? The question says, find all the points with the x coordinate. Well, I only found the y value right here. I didn't find what the x value is going, to, or uh, I didn't find what the points are. So I know that the x has to be one, and so I'm gonna take the two possibilities that I have for y and plug it in. So two plus two root three, which is what I have here, 
and then 2 minus 2 root 3, which is what I have here. So I take those two values, I plugged it in, and then I'm going to simplify it. Well, I already simplified it. So now let's examine the ideas of the midpoint formula. Now the midpoint formula says given the same two points, P0 and Q0, in the plane, the midpoint M of P and Q is defined to be the point on the line segment connecting those two together, where the distance from P is equal to the distance from Q. So what's saying is that the midpoint here, M, this has to now be equal and this now has to be equal if it's going to be halfway. Now to find this midpoint formula, we're going to use this equation here. What you're going to do is you're going to add, so for the, this represents a new x coordinate. So the midpoint, right, midpoint, this is a new x coordinate, this is a new y coordinate. So to find that new x coordinate, you're going to add the two x values together and divide by two. To find the new y coordinate, you're going to add the two y values together and divide by two. So let's examine a few of those. It says find the midpoint of the line segment connecting these two points together. So in visualizing the information, okay, I can say that those are my x0, y0, x1, y1. Plug the information into the midpoint formula. Okay, so if that's my formula, I just need to plug it in. Okay, now I could spend this time drawing it out, but it's fine. I'm trying to save a little time here. And so I plugged my x0 in plugged in my y naught, so it's 3, my x sub 1, and my y sub 1. Now you just need to simplify each one. And so that turns into negative 1 half, that turns into 0, and so this right here, this is going to be my midpoint. So what I did here was, you know, I labeled everything, helped visualize what's going on, plugged all the information into the formula, okay, so I plugged in those missing variables here, so that's what I did here. And then step three, the rest was just all simplifying. So I simplified this into this statement, simplified this into this statement. And so I can say that the midpoint of segment PQ is negative one half zero. Example number four. If A doesn't equal B, prove that the line Y equals X equally divides the line segment with, mid, uh, with endpoints AB and BA. So maybe let's draw this out. Let's take a look. So what is it saying? Well, if I have points AB, so that means I have points AB right here, and then if I have points BA, so I have points BA right here, what it's saying is that prove that this line, Y equals X, divides that line segment equally. So to do that, let's take a look here. Let's do this whole midpoint thing. So if I say that this is X naught, this is Y naught, x1 and this is y1. Let's plug those values into my midpoint formula. So we're going to plug everything in. Now if I do this, if I simplify, if we notice, these are the same exact thing. So if they're the same exact thing, it's the same thing as if I said, if I looked at this visually and I said if I add these two together and divide by two, I get this. If I add these two together and divide by two, you get this value right here. And so that would allow us to get that coordinate that's exactly in the middle of both those two. And so therefore, I can make the assumption that the midpoint lies on the line y equals x. So in closing, what did we learn today? Well, we talked about the midpoint, how to find the midpoint. And we even looked at uh, comparing the midpoint like abstractly. Does the values of like a and b and b and a, those two points, did it exist on the line? We also examined the distance formula and calculated the distance between two points. We even looked at the fact that, well, abstractly, if I have a line and I have a point, you know, what's the distance between that line and that point? Or at least what are the multiple distances or what are the points on the line that would create a certain distance? So there's a lot of different things that we could do and that we did do with that. So I want to hear from you. What are some of the things that you learned today? And then for some feedback, I want to know what is the distance formula and what is the midpoint formula. If you guys have any questions about the lesson, please leave them in the comments.